the master's degree in cybersecurity and information assurance at Western Governors University has changed. This isn't a small change either. They completely changed the certifications that you will get with this degree. So it's it's huge. No more e-console. You now have actual good certifications, except for one of them, which we'll talk about in just a second. But um, it's a really, really good change. And it supposedly is going to take place on June 1st. So what I'm going to do is I'll quickly show you the difference between the old version, which is the, the current version right now, versus the new version, which takes place in June. And then uh, we'll, we'll go through a couple of pages on their website so you can see the changes as well. All right, so I just made this really quick just so you can see that there were nine courses before that you needed in order to get the degree. Now there are 10. But for the most part, it's kind of sort of the same. Like as you can see, you have uh, ethical hacking is the first one on the old one. The new one is penetration testing. There are some differences in the actual courses as far as them being updated, but the reason why I didn't color code them is because I ended up getting a little bit confused. So for example, on the left side, the ethical hacking class is now the penetration testing class, but it's not just a, a normal update. Like you have an entirely different certification that you need to achieve in order to pass that class. So I just wanted to quickly show you this and now we can get into like the actual um, new classes. The three web pages that I'm about to show you are linked in the description below. You don't have to be logged in to visit these pages. They are all completely public. So I just wanted to throw that out there. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the information that's on here and then I'll kind of give you my opinion about the actual degree a little bit later. So the very first page, this is the main web page of WGU for this particular degree. If we scroll down a bit, you're going to see that it says it now is aligned to the NICE standards, the NSA Center of Academic Excellence, and the CISSP CBK. Uh, as you can see, the earliest you can start with this new degree is on June 1st. And so if we scroll down a little bit more, you're gonna see the new classes. You can learn a little bit of information about them, but I actually have a better link for this particular part. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see some of the certifications that are that are now going to come with this new degree. I want you to pay attention to a couple of things here. Some of them says optional voucher. If it's an optional voucher, it means that you will probably take an internal exam. And if you pass that class or let's say when you pass that that particular class, uh, they will give you a, a voucher that you can use if you want to. It's not going to be required for you to get the degree, but optional vouchers are always nice. So. They give you an optional voucher for the CASP Plus, which is which is great, and the CISM, which is pretty cool. But the CYSA Plus, the Pentest Plus, and the CC certification for ISC squared are likely going to be required in order to um, pass a particular course unless you have a way to transfer that credit in already. Also, I don't remember how much the current degree costs per term, but just so you guys know, it looks like, at least from what it says, that the new term cost will be $4,645. That may be the same as the old one, but uh, just in case it's not, I figured you should see that. This second link here has changed a little bit as well. I know it says last modified date was uh, on the 27th of last month. I guess whenever they update the webpage here, maybe they have to go in and modify the date and time on their own. I find that to be kind of weird, but whatever. Um, I know that it's been changed though, because the information down here is different. So. These are five classes that you can transfer in. You can transfer in 50% of your degree if you want to, as long as you have certain uh, requirements met. So here, for example, if you want to transfer in the pen testing class so you don't have to take it, then you can transfer in your CompTIA pen test plus certification, or you can transfer in the CEH and that will satisfy it as well. One of the things that's important here is to note, at least in my opinion, is that you used to be able to transfer in the CISSP to take care of two of these classes, but it looks like the CISSP now only uh, will transfer in the Security Foundations class. And then of course, there are five classes that no matter what, you must take them at WGU. This is nothing new. Uh, they always have at least a few classes that you must take at WGU no matter what, and they can't be transferred in. And in this particular case, that's these five classes here. The last link that I want to show you guys is WGU's program guidebook specifically for this particular certification. This one, again, it's a public link, but man, it's hard as hell to find this program guide. But the reason why I want to show you this program guide is because a lot of you uh, ask me questions like, well, can I do this class first? Can I do that class first? And while a lot of it is somewhat up to your program mentor, 
a lot of it actually comes from your program guide as well. So for example, if you're looking right here, you'll see there are certain prerequisites that you must hit. Like if you want to do the capstone, it straight up says all other prerequisites must be done. So you're not going to do the capstone as your first class. I don't think they'd let you do that anyways, even if you tried, but it is specifically kind of written here that you can't do it. And the same thing applies to the rest of this. If you don't have something that satisfies that security foundations class, that's going to be the first class in your degree, and there's not much that you can do about it. So again, I really think that this is a, a very good page for you to be able to, to get some of that information. One other thing is, I'm just going to click on another page here. Uh, as you can see, it will actually outline what, uh, what the course covers. It's not going to go into super depth, but if you're kind of interested in like, hmm, what is this class? What does this class do? What is it about? It also lists it in the program guide. It'll give you a little bit of uh, a little bit more information about the class as well. So look, if you want my opinion, honestly, I think that it's a really, really good change. Looking at the difference between the old degree and the new degree, it's serious. The old degree, like I don't think the old degree didn't have any value, but from a certification standpoint, the CEH and the CHFI, it just doesn't compare to what you're, you're getting now. I mean, I've said this before, but honestly, in my opinion, the master's degree in cybersecurity and information assurance is not meant to be a generic IT master's degree. It is a specialization. It is supposed to be something very specific. You know, you have IT and then you have information security, which is kind of a, a small subset of IT. And then you have cybersecurity, which is even a smaller subset of that. So it is supposed to be specialized. And because it's supposed to be specialized, you really want to get certifications that help you that are higher level, that are not necessarily more technical, but are more like laser focused in security and that command a certain level of respect. And you get that with the CISM, you get that with the CompTIA CASP. Now, that being said, there are two things that I don't really like about the new certification, even though I think overall as a whole, it is better. One of the things that I don't like is the fact that at the moment, it is just the first day, but at the moment, the CISSP certification only satisfies the requirement for one class it used to satisfy the requirements for two. And given the fact that the CISSP certification is, is really one of the highest level certifications that you can get in your information security career, I find it really strange that it only satisfies the requirement for the security foundations class. What? The other thing that I wanted to mention is the CC certification. I thought that one was a really weird choice. The thing about the CC certification by ISC squared is that that is meant to be a very, very entry level certification. And when I say entry level, I mean, it's like CC certification. And then a step above that would be the CompTIA security plus or the ISC squared SSCP. So the fact that they added that certification to the master's degree program is extremely weird to me. I know some of you are like, well, some certifications better than no certification, right? And I mean, I guess, but at the same time, uh, ISC squared literally gave a million people an opportunity to get all of the study material and take the exam for free because it was meant to be something for people brand new to the industry not really a certification for people who have been in there for a long time. Although the CISSP isn't required, I am kind of surprised that they didn't offer it as an optional voucher instead, given the fact that the whole course is supposed to be in line with the CISSP CPK, but maybe there's a reason why they didn't do that. But that was it. I just wanted to quickly give you all my opinion and let you know that the new degree is here, give you a little bit of information on it. I'm very, very curious to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think about the new degree? Do you like the certifications? Do you not like the certifications? I know it's going to be a little different going from nine classes to 10. Personally, again, I think it's a nice change, but I really want to hear your opinion. So what do you think? And until my next video, you guys take care.